Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod. We're continuing on with our discussion in Unit 1. Today we're going to begin, uh, we're going to continue discussing things that are related to maps and specifically we're going to be talking about scale. Now when we talk about scale there are really two different types of scale that we could be referring to. So the first one uh, we can talk about is what's called map scale. And so basically this is a lot of times what you see in your map key and it is just going to show you uh, the relationship that exists uh, between the distance on a map and the distance in the real world. And so map scale is really important because it helps us to understand basically the, the amount of area and it helps us to put, in, uh, puts in, put into perspective the amount of area that's being shown to us on the map so we can get a better idea of how things are situated uh, in, as far as their distance and relationship uh, from one to another. Now you'll notice on on a lot of things, especially all the maps that we look at, maybe uh, when we're at a park or we're at, um, you know, maybe a theme park or something like that, things are not necessarily drawn to scale, and so it's very difficult for us to really understand how far things are apart from each other. But when we look at more scientifically done maps, more professionally done maps, those should always have map scales on them to help us understand the distance between uh, two items. And, and again, if we're geographers, we're thinking about distance in relationship to how, did, how does dis distance impact the relationship or the interaction between those two places. So map scale can play uh, really a really important role for us. Uh, the second one is what's called scale of inquiry. Now this is going to be, you know, I might argue more important for the study of human geography uh, because what we're, what we're looking at with scale of inquiry is we're deciding on, you know, what is our area of study? What, um, what area uh, are we going to be looking at in order to make some, uh, create some conversations uh, to have some findings out about this particular area? Because what we're going to see is as our scale of inquiry changes, so does our understanding of the data that is being represented to us on the map that we're looking at. And so, uh, you know, we can look at a variety of different areas of study. I just have three here listed, you know, global, national, or local. So are we looking at the whole world? and the statistics of the whole world as far as what's going on. Are we looking at a national scale, just one country, the things that are going on there? Or are we looking at the local scale? And what you'll find is if you, you know, and you can go online, you can find some great uh, GIS programs that are put together. And you can, uh, the U.S. Census Bureau has some, you know, you can just do a Google search for some. But you will find that as you move closer to the local level or as you back away to a more national level, the statistics and the data begin to change. And why this is important is because uh, because it helps us to gain a better or more complete understanding uh, the further in that we go as far as the smaller our area of study, the more concentrated our area of study. Now that just helps to understand one, one space. Now if we want to understand a, a broader picture, maybe how uh, larger spaces are related to each other or how they uh, compare to each other, then we're going to want to go to a a, a larger scale of inquiry and study more area. But again, we'll talk more about this here in just, just a minute. Now, one thing that we need to know about map scale, sometimes this can be a little bit confusing. If we're talking about um, more area being shown, okay, uh, this is actually what's referred to a smaller scale. So if we talk about smaller scales, uh, this is actually referring to a larger area of study. And then the smaller the amount of area shown, so the more specific the data gets or the, the closer we zoom in, this is actually a larger scale or set to a larger scale. Now, these two things right here, smaller scale and larger scale, really have more to do with the fractions that appear uh, on the map scale than, than really anything else. And so that may or may not help you uh, as you, as you uh, try to relate these things, large scale versus small scale. Anyway, so if we talk about moving to a smaller scale map, we're just talking about more area being shown, more territory, more area of study. On a larger scale map, we're talking about less area being studied um, in total. So when we look at uh, these four maps here, you'll see that these are four different scales of map uh, scales of maps of Florida. Uh, and so a lot of times what I do in class, I ask, okay, class, which which of these maps shows the uh, the smallest scale? And so this is uh, this whole map of Florida up here in the upper left-hand corner. Now, this map right here is is helpful. It helps us to understand certain things. Like uh, we see most of the uh, uh, most of the state of Florida. We can see, you know, maybe how to get from Jacksonville to Miami. Uh, you know, but it's just giving us a, a bigger picture, more a larger overall picture. And then I ask my class, okay, so based on that, which one of these is the 
uh, the largest scale. And so that's going to be this one over here to the right. This gives us a, uh, a, a view of Miami that's zoomed in really closely. It's right here on the Miami River. Uh, now, it doesn't give us as much information as the map over here of Florida, but it gives us more detailed information of a particular part of the city of Miami. And so uh, all of these maps are going to be helpful just depending on the data that we're looking at. Now, of course, these are all reference maps. But if we're looking at thematic maps and we're looking at sets of data uh, that were represented in, uh, in the state of Florida and the city of Miami, as I move from the, the smaller scale of the state of Florida to the uh, larger scale of a portion of Miami, my understanding of the data and how it's represented in each of those areas is going to begin to change. And again, I might encourage you to go to a, uh, a GIS, um, you go to ArcGIS, you probably go to the, the U.S. Census Bureau and look at some of the, their different GIS maps and zoom in and out, go from smaller scales to larger scales and just see how the data changes as you move to those different scales so you can get a better understanding of how that works. Now when we talk about map scale, there are three main types of map scale that are going to be presented to you uh, on your, in your maps or on your maps. Uh, we have what's called fractional, written, and graphic scales. Now fractional scales, just like it sounds, it's a fraction. Okay, So uh, you have this right here is a fractional scale or you know what, what you might consider to be a ratio. These are, all, these are both considered fractional scales. Um, written scales are basically going to be written out. Okay, So in here you see one inch equals 1,000 inches. So uh, that means that one inch on the map equals 1,000 inches in the real world. Okay? Or you might have a graphic map, which is a lot of times typically what you're going to see on a map. So we have this little little bar down here that gives us uh, an idea of how far those things are. Uh, sorry, I went too far. But anyway, uh, so this up here says map distance first. And what that means is that whenever you're looking at it, uh, basically what that is is talking about how far something is on the map and that is how it relates to uh, the distances that are there in the real world. So anyway that's just a brief conversation on map scales and also this idea of scale of inquiry. I would really encourage you to pay attention to that concept uh, because again when we're looking at human geography and the study of that space and the data that's in that space uh, our scale of inquiry is really going to impact and affect the way that we understand the space. So pay attention to that. Maybe go check out some GIS maps on the internet, uh, go small scale to large scale and see how that data and information changes.